So Mac 2018 is just around the corner. One of our features this week from NCMT is this new Akuma Genos L3000E uh, lathe stroke turning centre. I'm with Richard Turner. We're going to find out a little bit about this machine. Uh, and of course, you'll be able to see this at the show uh, in Hall 19 from NCMT. Richard, just give us a, a very quick overview of why you've introduced this model. Yeah, um, so the Genos range, this Genos range of machines that we have is our entry level machines into the market. So the idea is we can offer a, a very stable, very productive machine, but at a much lower cost. So, you know, it's very focused on being an entry level machine. So what would be different from, from this and then a non-entry level model from Akuma? Is there much change in how it's built? Uh, to be honest, the build itself is pretty much the same. You know, they stick to the same design of machine themselves, you know, wrap around guideways on this type of machine. So you've got the choice of two now then, is that what we're saying? Yeah, and the technology, you can have a much more, you know, higher technology level on the LB range, whereas this range you're restricted on the technology level, but this is still a very productive machine. Okay, now t I notice here that you've got a VDI turret on this machine. Uh, generally, we tend to see more BMT turrets on this style of machine. Why have you opted for this, and is that a standard? Uh, when we go to the milling functionality, we've got two options really. We can have a BMT or we can have the VDI turret. So there is multiple options for this machine. And I know VDI is faster to change the tools, isn't it? So that could be one reason that someone might opt for that style of turret. Yeah, it is a quicker change solution. So if you want to do a quick change over from tools, then you know, this is possible. Now, it is, it is evident as well, we travel the length and breadth of, of Europe, really, looking at uh, machines of this size. You have got a lot of competition. So when uh, pushing this model, you must be looking for advantages over, over the many comp uh, you know, competitors who, that you've got. What, what would they be? Really, the, the sort of the, the rigidity of the machine and the power. You know, this, this new 3000 range, um, what we've now got is a built-in motor. So it's a 22 kilowatt motor. So, you know, quite a powerful motor for this size of machine. You know, it's quite a small compact machine, but it's still very powerful, very rigid, and this is going to last a long time. It's not going to be a throwaway item. That was going to be a question I was going to ask as well. When I've travelled around the field seeing some of your, your customers, they tend to have machines that may be decades old. Is this going to have the same sort of longevity? Yep, because those machines that were decades old is basically what this machine is underneath. It is an old design of machine brought back to the market with upgraded motors and, and controls, etc. So with this then I assume you'll probably be tapping into, uh, into markets where customers currently have different brands of machines and the most common control is a FANUC system. Uh, and notice here it's a, it's a G-code based control. Does, does it mean that if I did have one of the competitors machines I could take a program out of it and stick it straight in here and run the same program? Yeah, it wouldn't be a straight in from a FANUC system but it would be very close. So there'd be some minor editing to do, particular M codes, um, the tool core might be slightly different, but everything else will be the same. So the main bulk of the program will be the same. And would you consider there to be any advantages over this control than a normal FANUC system? Yeah, this, because this is quite an open system, so we can do various different things on here, which we'll be trying to do at the show as well. So connectivity, for instance. So we can build our own apps to put onto the control. And so there's a lot of functionality within the control itself, which is quite open. And what about the actual size of this machine? Sometimes we start these interviews talking about the, the spec and the size of it, but maybe let's conclude it this time on this. How big is this model? What can you turn, length and diameter and so forth? Yeah, so the diameter really is it's like a 300 size diameter is what you'd be looking at for this. Around about a 500 length uh, component you'd be putting on here. So, you know, you can swing a 540 part over the saddle, but obviously the turning diameter is still around 300. And with it being on the floor at Mac, what do you want, what, what would you like someone to look at this and go away knowing or thinking? Knowing that really they can afford an Akuma. That's one of the main principles of this. People think, oh, you know, I can't afford an Akuma. Whereas this is trying to give that message. You can now afford an Akuma machine. So there we have it. It's a good way to end. So Hall 19 on Wednesday of Mac. Uh, so that will be April the 11th. We will be filming live on their stand and you'll be able to see this machine cutting and we'll be all over it.